Chelsea now having played the same number of games. 13 games to go though, still plenty of potential twists and turns in this fascinating season. Well, we said at the start of the night, Michael, that Arsenal might have to be patient. They certainly didn't hit all uh, cylinders in the first 40 minutes, did they? No, they didn't. No, that's fair to say, Steve. I wouldn't say desperation, but they were starting to cross balls high into the box, and I'm sure that wasn't in Mikel Arteta's uh, game plan. But as soon as they started passing the ball and keeping it on the ground, they prized Everton open at the first real proper attempt, I think. And then once they did that, it was all over. I mean, they uh, they ran riot and went uh, went 4-0 four, four up eventually and 4-0 winners. Really interesting goal. I thought it was the pick of the bunch as well, this uh, this first goal, Leon. And you spotted something early on in the piece as well with the defensive uh, setup. I did. Um, yeah, just the fact that, uh, you know, highlight Michael Keane here because, I mean, you spoke before the game about the importance of the opposition just keeping... They're their back four in line and not allowing somebody just to drift into the space. And just in this moment, Michael Keane just gets tra attracted into that position. And in doing so, he opens up that gas with that gap. If Arsenal could have figured out a way of getting in there, I'm sure they would. But Martinelli shows really good patience in moving across, drifting this ball across into the wide area. And once Michael Keane gets back, him and James Tarkovsky in this moment have swapped positions and suddenly James Tarkovsky, which he has a natural tendency to do, he covers in behind Mikolenko really, really well. And once Michael Keane gets into that position, he doesn't do that as effectively and Arsenal took full advantage of that. Yeah, and I love the, the, the way that um, this then finished in terms of um, Sacco. You can see his hands, he's asking for the ball. He's wanting it in this situation. He's fully aware of everything that's around him. Mikalenko's on the wrong side of him, but he knows that he's his biggest danger. And I love the way he turns. He uses his body to get between uh, the ball and the man, and then the finish is exquisite for, with, his, uh, with his right foot. And just how good was that finish from Bakayo Saka? Absolutely brilliant. I mean, as, as Michael said, the, the awareness of, of him positionally, the awareness of him spotting that Martinelli had come into a wide position, taking up a position himself in between a full-back and a centre-half, having himself on the half-turn, and then taking the ball on the back foot, scooping it around with him so that Mikolenko had no way of even attempting to win the ball back. And from there, a couple of options to finish. He went for power, and power was the right choice. It gave, it gave goalkeeper no chance. And Arsenal had not necessarily struggled up to that point, but hadn't been the smooth system that, that we'd moment. But goals changed games. Players scored wonderful goals, and, and that was a brilliant opener. Yeah, and that then gave them the confidence to go on to, to, uh, to, to score four goals eventually. I mean, this is the second goal, Steve. Um, and, it, you know, it came from, from out wide, out on the left-hand side uh, eventually. Um, and it was the, the goal, really, that, that killed the game. Sorry, it came from the right-hand side. And Usaka, again, that, that was uh, instrumental in it with his, with his closing down. And the offside decision is quite interesting, actually, because the man is just in front of the ball, but... A man in front of the man, actually, but not in front of the ball. So that's why it was onside and a lovely finish from Martinelli. So just for a quickly reference on that first goal, put Pekka Osaka's finish into words for me. Well, right foot into the top near, near top corner. It was a lovely finish. I mean, he went for power. It was probably the only part of the goal, actually, that was impossible to save. So, um, yeah, lovely finish. High praise from a golden boot winner. Do you not think, Bakayo? <laughs> 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 yeah, thank you very much for that. <laughs> <laughs> How important was that goal at that time? Yeah, it was, it was vital because, like you said, um, it was really difficult first 30, 40 minutes, you know, trying to get the breakthrough and they were defending so well. So, yeah, to take that chance and then get another one with, with Gabby um, to put us 2-0 up was, was really good for us going in at half-time. And what's your version of that finish? You didn't have much of the goal to aim at. No, I didn't. I just went, like you said, I went for power and high because, obviously, from that distance, you know, I think that's the best option and, yeah, it, it, it worked this time. Bakayo, brilliant finish. Uh, I just want to ask you about the, the first touch and your body position, actually, to, to get you into that position. Were you aware that Mylenko was probably your danger and you had to protect the ball with your body, taking the touch like that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I knew, obviously, he was on my side and if I could turn away from him in a position where he could only touch me, if he touched me, it would be a penalty. So, you know, I knew that I was past him and I had time to set myself and... You know, obviously, it's my right foot, so I need extra yard to set myself and, yeah, get the finish away. <laughs> OK, how confident are you as a team? Because, as you just mentioned, Everton frustrated you for 40 minutes, but 
you know when you look around the pitch and see who's playing alongside you, there are real moments of quality and ability that you can all call upon at any moment. It was you that scored the opening goal tonight, but how, how much confidence does it, does it give you looking around and see what's on the pitch? Yeah, definitely. I have a lot of confidence in my team. You know, we've been in this situation many times this season and we know, you know, in situations like this, we have to just keep trying, keep trying, you know. Look at, for example, in this case, you know, it's our, our left back popping up in this position, giving me a through ball. So everywhere you look in this team, there's quality and, yeah, I can really feel confident in this team. And you're smiling. It looks like the whole team at the moment are playing with a smile on their face. You can see that in your football, Bakayo. Yeah, definitely. For me, that's the reason I started football. So, yeah, I just have to always enjoy it. Otherwise, you know, what's the point? And how important was that second half with the, with the goals to, to get the emphatic scoreline in the end? Yeah, it was, it was really important. And you could see the, the confidence we were playing, you know, how it generated with the fans. You know, the fans were, were buzzing with it. So I think it gives us a big boost, you know, coming back here. Um, on Saturday against Bournemouth, you know, that we have the big belief we can, we can do something like this again. And everyone was talking about your game in hand tonight. You can see the table there. You, you've won it. You're five clear. 13 games to go. <laughs> 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 Not much to say about that. We have to just focus on the next one. We got a laugh out of him as opposed to a smile, so that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we enjoyed your performance tonight. Great to speak to you. Thank you, thank you. Good to speak to you too. Well played. Thank you, Bakaya. Well All right, take care. That was fascinating to hear about his finish there, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a great finish. It really was. Um, but, you know, just striking the ball and it going in the top corner, lots of people can do it, but it's the posi how people get into those positions that fascinate me. Because if you do the wrong thing in the, in the lead-up to that goal, you don't even get the chance in the first place. You get tackled uh, or whatever, but his first touch, his second touch, almost in one movement, then set up the chance. It was a lovely strike. Another unbelievable season for him. He's into double figures, Bakayo Saka for the season. Stay with us, lots more. That was pretty emphatic. Your, mm. your, your grin says a lot. You must be delighted with that second half performance in particular. I'm delighted with the win, uh, with the way we played after the first 25 minutes, which I think in the first period we have some difficulties. Obviously, they are really physical. They are really well organised, to be fair, and they are really difficult to play through. You look at the games, the goals they have conceded, um, they were and when they are in in the deep block. Uh, but once we scored the first goal, I think the game unlocked. We started to get much better rhythm, attack, much better space, much better organisation as well to don't allow them to run and we just have to win the game. Yeah, patience did prove to be key, didn't it, tonight? That first 40 minutes until you got the, the breakthrough yeah. goal, it was a you know, uh, not a mad five minutes before half time, but the game completely broke open in that five minutes. Yeah, but they... until then, as you say, Everton very organised and you had to bide your time and wait for your chance. And what Sean and the coaching staff do defensively is extremely good. You know, there's a lot of things to learn from the discipline that they have, the organisation they have, how they help each other in certain areas of the pitch. Really, really good, to be fair. But uh, yeah, we needed a magic moment and Bukayo produced that with Alex to the first goal. Uh, and after that, I think we grow and grow um, on the game and with the set to win the game. Yeah, the second goal, a big moment as well, right on half-time, giving you that, that little bit of elbow room at 2-0 after the VAR call. Yes, and especially with them, you know, the way they play and how good they are and on direct play, second balls, producing set pieces. Um, a short score is not enough because they can get in the game straight away. But I think we, we played really well the second half and we could have scored more. Yeah. Can you enjoy a second half performance like that in the moment in real time? Or are you so focused on the touchline that it almost passes you by? <laughs> no, I am obviously delighted when I see the team play the way we want to play and, and scoring goals and creating chance after chance. But... Uh, you're doing that as well. You want to recognise certain players and give them minutes. You want to maintain the level and score more if, if possible. You are thinking as well, OK, how do I rest certain players for Saturday? So it's a lot in your mind. Do you see the team effectively growing in many ways, almost week by week, in dealing with these situations, dealing with the pressure, finding ways to win, performing well in this sort of situation? Because obviously your team are the favourites to win tonight, but you still have to go out there and do it. Yeah, and in this league, it, that's a different story. And, and we had a big proof of that when we played at Goodison. Um, and this team played at Anfield and it made it really difficult for Liverpool as well. So we knew that. So really pleased with the performance, the maturity and the quality that we showed today. Mikel Arteta, really pleased. Let's go back to the Emirates. Uh, Arsenal and former Everton and Arsenal uh, striker Kevin Campbell's been with us all evening. Um, Kevin, you were saying that they had to be patient uh, on 40 minutes. Did you get that feeling inside the stadium? Yeah, I, I did. I've got to say, I think Everton frustrated Arsenal quite a bit 
the way they were doubling up on the wide players, weren't letting Martinelli get out, weren't letting Bukayo Saka get out. I think there had to be a little rethink. Uh, you saw Martinelli move off the left-hand side and, and join Saka on the right-hand side. There had to be a bit more movement, Saka coming off the line and moving inside. And it made it a little bit more difficult for Everton. And the, the key is the first goal. You've got to get the opportunity, you've got to put it away. And Bukayo Saka, you know, this young man's so impressive. Right? And they couldn't keep it out. They got caught, you know, by slack play, going at 2-0 and uh, really the game's over. Yeah, how frustrating was it for, I mean, the, the, the fans in the stadium, you know, the Arsenal fans were really patient. The Everton fans must have been really frustrated, you know, conceding that second goal in the manner that they did right before half-time. Aussie, it's a killer. It really is a killer. I think the, the Everton fans were, 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 were quite fine at, at, at 1 0, even though it was disappointing. Going at half time and, 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 you know, rejig and sort yourselves out and then, you know, try and push for an equaliser. But to concede the way they did, you know, it was, a, it, was a, it was a poor goal to give away. It just makes life so much more difficult. And I'm sure Zorn Dyche, he was, he was trying to bring players on to try and get them going. But I think in the end, second half, Arsenal just ran the, ran the legs off them. Kevin, you know what it feels like to win a, a league title in that Arsenal shirt. Do you feel, do you get the sense around the place that this team is good enough and have got the confidence and the belief to go on and do it this year? I'll be honest with you, Michael. I think the team do have enough quality. They do have that tenacity. The big question is, are they a little bit too young? You know, it's the second youngest team in the league, Southampton the bottom. You know, Arsenal were top. You're going against a juggernaut as, as Man City. We all know Manchester City could, could push on. They're gonna, they've got the quality players to go on a run. Arsenal seem to be in a good position right now. And look, you, you know, we, we, we try and take it one game at a time. But you look at the next five or four games, mm. this was one of them. And you say to yourself, you know, Arsenal have a really big chance. F four of those five games are at the Emirates. So you really got to fancy them to... to get maximum points if they can and put a lot of pressure on Man City. Yeah, and Kev, let me take you back to when you won the league. We're, we're into March now, of course. That season, Arsenal were unbeaten between March and May. This is the business end of the season now where you have to hold your nerve? 100%. I think once you get down to 10 games or single digits, that's when the pressure's on, everything counts. It, it kind of feels like it counts double. So... Getting there, getting there with maximum points. I think eating into that goal difference as well was important tonight. Bournemouth next oh, at the weekend. You want, you know, you look at Arsenal, you're going to say to yourself, Arsenal need to push on and score goals. Got to win that game and, and put, then put real pressure on Manchester City. Kevin, we just spoke about Arsenal and, and holding their nerve in, in the run that they have and what they're trying to achieve this season. We know what Everton are trying to achieve this season. Are you, are you starting to be concerned that they won't be able to, to stay in the Premier League with, with the results they're having and the performances we're starting to see? Ozzy, uh, if I'm honest, I, I was worried because, you know, in the transfer window, they didn't bring anybody in, didn't bring another striker in to help Dominic Calvert-Lewin, to help Neil Mope. Ellie Sims is there. I think you, 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 you've got to use him. You have to use him because they just don't look like they're going to score. And, you know, depending on defenders to, to score you goals to win games is not good for the football club so you've got to find a way and uh, I think they've got to try Ellis Sims and maybe Neil Mopay up there you know as a, as, a, as a tandem because you have to be able to beat teams. Yeah and Kev you, you know what it's like to, to, to put results together at the bottom with Everton and survive on that point they've scored six goals in 13 games how do they change that to try and get a a run like you did that time with Everton when you looked dead and buried? Well, I, I, if I'm honest, I think Sean Dyche is trying to just go back to basics to make them hard to beat. But within that, you still have to win games and you need as much firepower on the pitch as you can. Unfortunately, Dominic Calvert-Lewin struggles with injury, so they haven't been able to rely on him. He played in the first game uh, against Arsenal at Goodison Park and he, he played very well for 60, 65 minutes. But if he's not there, you know, who do you rely on? Neil Mopé looks out of sorts. What is it, 17, 18 games he hasn't scored in? So I think, you know, it might be a bit of pressure for the young man, Ellis Sims, but I think you need to give him an opportunity. He scored goals wherever he's gone, scored goals on loan. 
and you've got to give it that chance because if you can't beat teams, you are going to struggle, no matter how good your, your defence or midfield are. Kev, has ever enjoyed your company tonight. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Cheers. That's Kevin Campbell at the Emirates. I mean, he's saying give Elliot, uh, Ellis Sims a go. It's not really the time for an untried, unproven young man as we perhaps we saw in the derby at Anfield. Uh, well, it's not as it's not as simple as that. Uh, what he did say was Everton need to have the ability to score goals, and without that ability. You're not going to win games. You're at best going to get draws. You're not always going to have the opportunity to nick it from set pieces. Does that getting players' heads, Leon? That, would they be aware they've only scored six in 13? Uh, absolutely, yeah. That, that you know you're, you're not capable of scoring goals. When your teammate goes through one-on-one -on -one or in certain situations, you don't have confidence that they're going to be able to, to score the goal you need. And then you're worried about conceding. If you do, you know how difficult it is to get back in the games. And those teams that get out of the situations as we move to, to, to the, the run-in towards the end of the season, they have goal scorers. They have goals where they might have a game where they frustrate the opposition and they'll get a goal. If Everton did have a game like this, away from home especially, they won't score. At best, they'll get a nil and they'll get a, a nil-nil draw. And one point isn't necessarily enough in this situation as you get to the run-in. You need to surprise teams. You need to win three points. You need to get a run where suddenly you pick up six points in two games and they don't score the enough goals to be able to do that. Sign, when you're at the top of the league and you're playing a team in the bottom three, you've got two, go and get three, go and get four. Is, is that what potential champions do? They do, and also, um, when you look at the top of the table, you never know, this, this could finish on, on goal difference, this, uh, this title. And Manchester City have got a small advantage at the moment, so four tonight, then they play Bournemouth at the weekend, they'll be eyeing another four against them, and all of a sudden, it's quite close in terms of goal difference, so... They're keen to keep putting the three points on the on the board, but it's an absolute bonus if you can get a few goals while you're at it. Yeah, another terrific night for Arsenal. The other